Nowadays, business aviation is already an established industry with its own niches. Flocks of light aircraft share the sky with fleets of VIP airliners. But among them there is a special type, the real flagships of pure breed, the perfection of which is comparable only to their cost. And today we are going to get acquainted with one of these perfect birds. Hello aviators, Sky here, and we have on the platform the Bombardier Global 6500. The history of one of the main offspring of Bombardier began in the late 1980s, when the corporation bought out many famous companies, including Canadair, Short Brothers, Learjet and De Havilland Canada. Having become in fact the main aircraft manufacturer in Canada, the company immediately took up the development of its assets, and their great desire was to enter the market of large business jets, the flagships of the business aviation industry. To solve this task, a new team was formed, assembled from different departments of the company, with the involvement of specialists from several countries. As a base, it was decided to use the design of the Challenger business jet. The plane was in the medium class, but proved to be excellent and could become the basis for a future large aircraft. The project, called Global Express, was announced in 1991 and was being actively developed over the next few years. Already by the mid-1990s, Bombardier showed a clear interest in their machine and developed expansion, hoping, having received such a trump card in their hands, to bite off a big piece of the market. First of all from their American colleagues from Gulfstream, who specialized in the aircraft of this class. Assembly began at their de Havilland plant in Toronto, and finally, in 1996, the first prototype took to the air. Tests of several prototypes continued until 1998, when the aircraft received certificates from the Aviation Authorities of Canada and then the United States and Europe. Deliveries began in 1999. 15 planes. Large and expensive planes, not bad for the first year. Quite quickly, on the wave of success, it was decided to expand the potential market coverage by creating modifications. In 2001, the Global 5000 was announced, which was slightly smaller than the original Global Express. Next, the original aircraft was upgraded, now called the Global Express XRS – Extended Range and Speed. This pair flew well and conquered the sky, but by the beginning of the 2010s, Bombardier decided to carry out another series of upgrades, moving in fact into the third generation of their flagship jets. This did not affect the 5000s, because it, in its niche, was quite successful. But it was decided to modernize the XRS, making changes to the design and improving onboard equipment. This is how the Global 6000 appeared. Production was launched in 2012. On this, in the race for excellence, aviators calmed down a bit and moved towards increasing the size of the aircraft, which led to the birth of a true leader and the current flagship, the Global 7500. The 52-ton big guy is already climbing into the niches of VIP airliners, and its range of 14,200 kilometers is limited more by the patience of the passengers than by the supply of fuel. Of course, having such an interesting aircraft with a lot of the latest solutions, as well as vigilant competitors, Bombardier decided to improve the flagship's little brothers, and in 2018 introduced two upgraded aircraft, the Global 5500 and Global 6500. The work on these aircraft was carried out very quickly. Three planes took part in the test program at once. Certification was completed in September of 2019 in Canada, and documents from the FAA and EASA arrived before the end of the year. In 2020, both Bombardier newcomers were already delivered to customers. Not the best year for world aviation, but at least there was something positive. So, it's time to get to know the most advanced creations of the Canadian aircraft industry closer. Standing before us is the Bombardier Global 6500. The model 6500 in its overall configuration is quite a classic jet aircraft. Low swept wing, two engines and a T-tail. The overall design is close to relatives, the medium Challenger jets and regional CRJ airliners. This fact makes the Globals outwardly similar to ordinary airliners, which is a little boring compared to the Wild Falcons and thoroughbred Gulfstreams. 
but the unification makes the planes a little cheaper, especially since, in terms of performance, the Globals are quite capable of pushing their peers in the class, being in no way inferior to them. The plane is quite big. Length 30.3 meters, wingspan 28.7 meters, height 7.8 meters. Its brother, the Global 5500, is similar, inferior only in fuselage length, 29.5 meters from nose to tail. With such dimensions, the aircraft of course is not light. Its maximum takeoff weight exceeds the Mach of 45 tons, which makes it heavier than the CRJ-1000. The landing gear is tricycle with a swivel front leg, for airfields of decent quality. The plane is too large for any extremes, such as unpaved runways. Legs of the main gear are quite powerful and squat, equipped with bogies with a couple of large wheels on each one. The front leg is equipped with two smaller wheels. The wing of the big global is quite decent. A span of 28.7 meters and an area of 94.8 square meters. For example, the wing of the CRJ-1000 is inferior to it by 2.5 meters in span and 22% in area. While other manufacturers strive for minimalism, Bombardier don't deny themselves anything, giving the wing a complex shape, high aspect ratio, control surfaces and high lift devices, like on the big airliners. Large slats extended along the leading edge, three sets of flaps on each console, ailerons and spoilers. A complete set without compromise. This design complicates the wing, but gives it the best performance, increasing stability in flight and reducing minimum speeds during takeoffs and landings. In addition, a narrow wing with high aspect ratio is flexible, thanks to which it absorbs vibrations during, for example, turbulence, which has a positive effect on cabin comfort. A useful bonus for a business jet. The tail is also a classic T-shaped. A large horizontal stabilizer is mounted on top of the fin. In order to lift the plane into the air and give it the necessary performance, it needs a suitable fiery heart. And here they found pearls. The Global 6500 as well as the Global 5500 are powered by a pair of Rolls-Royce Pearl engines. The Rolls-Royce Pearl is a member of the rather popular BR700 engine family, created by a joint venture between Rolls-Royce and BMW, the current Rolls-Royce Deutschland. Pearl, the most advanced of these motors, was created in the mid-2010s with the active application of advanced solutions that gave it better economy and environmental friendliness. A more energy-intensive hot section, a pressure ratio inside of as much as 43 to 1, a lot, and a bypass ratio of 4.8 to 1. For a motor of this size, it's pretty decent. The 48.5 inch fan is titanium. Again, for this size, titanium is better than composite. Thrust 67.3 kN. This allows a big guy like the Global 6500 to climb to 12.5 km with a full load, with a ceiling of as much as 15.5 km. Its cruising speed reaches the mark of Mach 0.88, approximately 504 knots, 934 km per hour. The maximum speed is Mach 0.9. The airplane needs a runway 1,873 meters long for takeoff and only 682 for landing. Thrust, reverse, wing and braking system do their job. The Honeywell RE220 auxiliary power unit is mounted in the rear fuselage section with the exhaust on the right. The plane is big, you can't go without an APU. Oh yes, one of the most important indicators of a large business jet in the I fly wherever I want class. The flight range of the Global 6500 under normal conditions with 8 passengers on a Mach 0.85 cruise speed reaches 6600 miles, 12,223 kilometers. Which means, let's say from London, you can easily fly even to Los Angeles or Singapore. Keeping these numbers in mind and estimating that you can spend 14 hours in the air, let's see in what conditions you can spend these 14 hours. The fuselage of the Global 6500 is one of those few elements that came from relatives without particularly large-scale changes. 
The diameter remained at around 2.7 meters. The cabin width of 241 centimeters and the height of 188 centimeters are slightly larger than those of the Challenger 650, mainly due to the internal finishing. The main increase in volume is the length. The cabin was stretched by more than 13 meters. The windows are also a legacy of the Challengers, rectangular with an additional metal frame, a business jet bonus. The capacity of the 6500 model is 17 passengers and 4 crew members, but this is a maximum, a rather rare occurrence. In front near the entrance is the galley, a full kitchen with all the equipment, coffee machine, microwave, cabinets, a countertop and so on, no compromises. Opposite the kitchen block there is a seating area for the flight attendant. You don't stay on your feet the whole time on such long flights. Plus, a little ahead, right behind the cockpit, there is a lavatory, mainly for the crew. Next comes the main cabin. As it should be for such aircraft, huge, full of technology and well finished. Let's go from nose to tail. In front there are four seats, two pairs opposite each other. Bombardier are especially proud of these new seats, which they created for the big Global 7500 and brought here. They call them Nuage, which is French for cloud. The functionality is complete with leg support, backrest tilt, shifts and turns, very smooth in all directions. Between each pair of seats is placed a table retractable from the wall. Next comes another element of the conference configuration. Four seats in two rows opposite each other. Between them there is a large table and on the other side of the aisle there is a large credenza unit. On top of it you can optionally put a nuage chaise, which can be just a flat surface and act as an additional sofa or rise turning into a lounger. Exotic. In our case it is limited to just a credenza. The third zone is separated from the main cabin by a wall and is isolated by a retractable door. On the left side there are two seats opposite each other, and on the right there is a full-fledged sofa that can be laid out into a bed. The structure of the aircraft is built in such a way that the engines are located quite far away and the noise even here is minimal, it is quite possible to sleep. Moreover, we can't forget that we are still on a plane, so security measures remain. Even the sofa has belts, pulled out from the retractable column behind the back. Beautiful. Following the cabin is a lavatory from the category I want this at my home. A spacious room with several storage compartments and a wardrobe, sink, lots of lights and of course a modest window with a gorgeous view. Our trip to the cabin doesn't end at the lavatory. More precisely, the cabin itself ends here, but we can sneak further through a small door into the luggage compartment. Yes, the main tailgate of the aircraft is outside, however access to luggage is maintained throughout the flight. The big update that came to the aircraft of the global family in this generation was the new air conditioning system. Bombardier Pure Air turned out to be much more efficient, both in terms of airflow, it can ventilate the entire cabin in just a minute and a half, and in terms of comfort, maintaining temperature, pressure, humidity and air purity. Interior comfort is top notch, from the carpet you want to sleep on to the pure metal and wood finishing elements. Meanwhile, the classic look should not create the impression of obsolescence. The filling here is like in Star Trek. A general control unit for cabin systems at the flight attendant in the kitchen, wireless applications for controlling functions, interfaces in the cabin, several 4K monitors on the walls, internet on board and everything else. The big globals in business aviation are at the top, battling with only a few similar aircraft from other competitors and airliners with exclusive VIP configurations, often worth hundreds of millions of dollars. The fact that everything is at the maximum here is quite logical. Well, it's time to leave all this design and look at the real beauty, a paradise for aviation geeks.
When you first look at the cockpit of the Global 6500, you understand that it controls a large aircraft. But at the same time, it is seriously optimized and perfectly finished. Dark design of the equipment, carbon looking outlines at the sides and leather upholstery of the walls. Gorgeous. The creators sought to simplify control, make it comfortable and intuitive, which in addition to design resulted in maximum automation and the introduction of advanced technologies. The cockpit is equipped with Bombardier's Big Pride, the Global Vision Flight Deck Avionics, created in collaboration with Collins Airspace on the basis of the Proline Fusion, very popular in business aviation. The Vision Flight Deck, made for the Global 5500 and 6500 models, forms a cabinet with a full range of interfaces, four large multi-function displays, plus an optional pair of tablets. Everything of course is digital, there are no papers. All instructions, documents and checklists, everything is in the computer. Here, however, I will note that one of the most advanced cockpits is in an aircraft without a fly-by-wire control system. This is the legacy of the previous Globals, the first of which, let me remind you, was born back in the 1990s, when there was no hurry to put fly-by-wire on everything. This does not affect performance critically, and the passengers don't care, if they even know what fly-by-wire is. Let's talk more about bonuses. The cockpit is equipped with a pair of retractable head-up displays, which allow you to monitor the situation in flight without being distracted from the view in front of the aircraft. But here the HUDs are not simple and can display much more than everyone is used to. The aircraft has a synthetic vision formation complex. Having a whole set of cameras and sensors of various types, including infrared cameras on board, the computer forms a virtual image of the surrounding world and gives a clear visual to the pilot, even if nothing is visible behind the glass in reality. They even came up with a special indicator, a kind of dome on the screen which points to key objects such as airports, in case the area is completely unfamiliar. That's right, just like in GTA. And yes, all this is displayed not only on screens, but also on the glass panel in front of the pilot. Having received such an aircraft at their disposal, Bombardier did not deny themselves the pleasure of making modifications. These are mostly specialized government and military aircraft, reconnaissance aircraft, maritime patrols like the Saab Swordfish, E-11A, Raytheon Sentinel or most recognizably the Global Eye Complex with a huge radar unit on top. The aircraft are very curious but are made in single units. The main business of Bombardier is after all business jets. And this business is going very well. The models 5500 and 6500 are quite young, so there are not that many of them yet, but they are conquering their market. Their cost is appropriate, starting from $46 million for a small one and from $56 million for a large one. Plus the cost of customization, which depending on the wishes of customers can be anything. The family of large globals has long won its place under the sun. More than 1,000 aircraft fly around the world, and that is with their cost and not such a gigantic market. Thank you to Bombardier for creating this beauty for us. And you, lovers of flying and sometimes flying with style, like and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to watch the videos early, see some exclusive behind the scenes content or just support the channel, consider joining our Patreon community. Comfortable flights and soft landings to you.